can do it on me. Okay. Hey guys, we're gonna do disc port today. Um, I think the most important thing as an injector when you're injecting neurotoxin is to get the brows and the forehead injection um, right, then your patient will always come back to you. If you, you know, it's kind of hard to screw up the crow's feet. It's hard to screw up the glabellar complex. I mean, you're really just freezing this group of muscles here, but how you inject in the forehead is gonna make a difference on whether somebody comes back to see you or not, because that really determines how high the brows go, what kind of shape you're gonna get and so forth. So Amanda's gonna go with a more conservative treatment today. So in the glabellar complex, normally you would inject, um, Usually the recommendation is about 40 to 50 units. Um, if someone wants to be more conservative, you can definitely start around 30. I do kind of talk to my patients about, hey, you know, if we do a lower dose, that's fine, but it might not last you as long. Um, the treatment might not be as strong, or if it is as strong as you want it to be, it might just not last as long. And what is Dysport? What's the difference of Dysport and Botox? Um, so I usually tell people that um, they're very similar in the way they work. Um, Dysport tends to have a more rapid onset, so you tend to see the result a little quicker. Mm. Um, but as far as you know, how long it lasts, uh, almost all the neuromodulators are three to four months if you do proper dosing. Mm. They can, you know, go away faster if you do a more conservative treatment or lower than average dosing per muscle group. Okay, good. So now, um, so for the forehead, lift up really high. So if somebody want, you know, you want to find out if they want to have movement or not, and then you want to make sure that their brows don't peak too high. So, you know, if you don't want your, their brows to peak too high, you can do a little injection, kind of at the peak of the brow here. And then go ahead and you can inject the rest. You don't want to go too crazy with uh, injecting too much in the center unless the patient really has good muscle movement there because you can potentially drop the central portion of the brow. Um, so you don't want them to this kind of be going down and this be going up. You want this to all be kind of lifted and open. Mm -hmm. without having the Spock brow. But there are a few patients who <laughs> like the Spock brow. So. <laughs> Definitely a personal preference. <laughs> and we can go pretty conservative here on the crow's feet. And actually, I think that she could also benefit from a tiny bit in the nasalis muscle. So don't forget to mention other muscle groups to your patients. I usually, during the consultation that I'm talking to the patient, I'm observing their facial expressions, I'm observing their muscle movements, and I make recommendation based on that. So if you're talking to someone and you notice that, you know, they're pulling their chin up a lot and there's a lot of dimpling in the chin, then that's something you can recommend. If you notice that they're kind of pulling down um, making more of that. Some people don't even realize that they're making these these movements, but if you know their DAOs are a little stronger and there's a little bit more pulling down, there's a little bit more jowling, you can recommend to do a couple drops in the DAOs as well. So the patients are there um, to, I mean, they're, they're here to kind of get your expertise. So you know, you're there to educate them about their options, not to force it on them, but just to kind of say, hey, these are some things that, you know, I think you can do to improve and this is how much it's gonna be and you know, this is how often you're gonna to have to maintain it, but what are the benefits and so forth? And of course, what are the risks? Mm -hmm. and if you're probably injecting the right muscle groups, then you're not going to have any issues, but occasionally products do migrate, patients are non compliant or they lay down after the treatment and you know they can get some migration of the product. So you do want to have that conversation. Now migration can lead to uh, affecting other muscle groups that then you have things that unintentionally are targeted, muscle groups that are not targeted, uh, that you don't want them to be targeted and then you, you have abnormal facial expressions. So 
just educate your patients and give them the best treatment you can. Thanks.